News. South Korea reports two more cases of the coronavirus, bringing the total number to 30. A couple living in downtown Seoul who've neither been overseas nor had any known contact with other patients. President Moon Jae-in says it's time for all-out efforts to revitalize the Korean economy, calling for a joint push by government ministries. A new plan announced for this year focused on innovation and new industries. And the South Korean government will be offering financial support to companies affected by the coronavirus, including emergency loans worth around 250 million U.S. dollars. Also benefits for low-cost airlines that have had to cut their services. It's 4 o'clock p.m. here in Seoul. Thanks for tuning in to Arirang News. I'm Devin Whiting. It's after no reports of new corona cases, coronavirus cases for five days, South Korea has seen two more cases over the weekend. The total number of confirmed cases in South Korea now stands at 30. For more on this, we have our Oh Jung-hee on the line. Jung-hee, what's the latest? Devin, the 29th patient is an 82-year-old South Korean man. He is the oldest confirmed patient in the country so far. And the 30th patient is actually his 68-year-old wife. Officials say the couple live in Seoul's central Jongnogu district. On Saturday, the male patient visited Korea University Anam Hospital because of a chest pain. There, doctors found symptoms of pneumonia, so they ran a coronavirus checkup, to which he tested positive. After her husband went into quarantine at Seoul National University Hospital, early on Sunday. The 30th patient was also confirmed with COVID-19 and has been isolated at the same hospital. Since then, Korea University Anam Hospital has closed its emergency room. A total of 76 people, both medical staff and the patients there who came into contact with the confirmed patients have been quarantined as well. Well, jung a point of concern here is that it's not yet known how these two people came to be infected. That's right, Devin. This elderly couple has not been overseas since December 2019. They're also believed to have had no contact with the previous 28 confirmed patients. So health authorities are currently trying to figure out where and when they could have been infected. Up until now, South Korea has seen no deaths out of the novel coronavirus, and 9 out of the 30 confirmed cases have been released from quarantine after making full recoveries. To prevent the further spread of the coronavirus, the government is planning to run tests for the virus on all pneumonia patients across the country. Those who have not traveled abroad can also be tested so that possible infections can be found as soon as possible. By the end of the month, it will be possible to test up to 10,000 people in a day, a rise from the current 5,000. That's all for me from now. Back to you. All right. Oh Jung-hee, thank you for that. And meanwhile, South Korea is looking to bring back its nationals who are stuck on the Diamond Princess cruise ship in Japan. The ship's been docked off the Japanese port city of Yokohama for two weeks now. Here's the health minister speaking yesterday. The government has decided to push for a repatriation plan before February 19th if any of the South Koreans who test negative for the virus hope to come back home. The 14 Koreans on the cruise ship, nine passengers and five crew members have been quarantined since February 3rd. As of Sunday, there were 355 confirmed cases of COVID-19 on the Diamond Princess, with about 3,700 passengers and crew members on board. The novel coronavirus is showing no signs of easing in China. More than 1,700 people have died there, with the number of new cases rising. And reports of more infections are coming out from the Diamond Princess cruise ship as well. Our Che jong yun has the latest. The number of confirmed cases of the novel coronavirus has surpassed 70,000 in China. The Chinese authorities reported on Monday that the virus has infected at least 2,000 more people within the past 24 hours. There were also 100 more deaths in Hubei province, the epicenter of the outbreak, hiking the total death toll in China to over 1,700. In Japan, 70 more people have tested positive for the virus on board the quarantine Diamond Princess cruise ship that remains docked at Yokohama port. It brings the number of total confirmed cases on the vessel to 355 and over 400 in the country, the highest number outside of mainland China. On Monday morning, the U.S. evacuated its citizens that have been holed up on the cruise ship for weeks. Some 300 passengers boarded two airplanes chartered by the U.S. government at Tokyo's Haneda Airport. 
American travelers who were quarantined on the cruise ship for more than 10 days were screened for symptoms prior to disembarking the ship and will undergo another two weeks in quarantine upon their arrival in the U.S. 44 Americans who tested positive could not return home. Taiwan also reported its first COVID-19 death on Sunday after a male taxi driver in his 60s died from the virus. It makes him the fifth death outside of mainland China. The man was one of the two confirmed cases in Taiwan, with the other being a family member of the deceased male. It's been reported he had no recent travel history outside Taiwan. However, local reports say most of his customers were people who had a history of traveling to China, Hong Kong and Macau, as it could have been human-to-human -human transmission from another carrier. Choi jung yoon Arirang News. Some Chinese scientists believe COVID-19 might have come not from the Wuhan fish market, but from a research facility. They're still doing more research, though, to add to their findings. Kim Hyo-sun tells us more. Amid the continued spread of the COVID-19 virus, there's rising speculation the virus could have originated from a government laboratory in Wuhan, rather than the widely held belief that it emerged from the city's Huanan seafood markets. Citing a report published by Chinese scientists, a Chinese-language newspaper published in Hong Kong, Ming Pao, and the British daily The Mirror, explained Sunday that the Wuhan Center for Disease Control, or WHCDC, could have spawned the contagion in Hubei province. According to the report penned by Bo Tao Xiao and Lei Xiao of the South China University of Technology, the research lab, which is only 280 meters away from the Huanan Seafood Market, kept disease-ridden animals, including more than 600 bats. It stated that while it's plausible the virus was leaked from the lab and contaminated initial patients in this epidemic, more solid evidence is required through future study. The report also raised the possibility that the Wuhan Institute of Virology could have leaked the virus while it was carrying out tests involving Chinese horseshoe bats. Against such a backdrop, an article published by the Washington Times late last month is garnering attention as it raised the possibility that the disastrous outbreak could be the accidental result of biological weapons research. This comes as a renowned law professor at Tsinghua University in Beijing, Xu Jiangren, is known to be missing after publicly condemning Chinese President Xi Jinping for failing to contain the spread of the virus at an early stage. He even added the condemnation could be the last message of his life. Kim Hyo-san, Arirang News. South Korea's Ministry of Unification said Monday that North Korea has tested 141 people showing symptoms of the coronavirus, and they all came out negative. The regime reported the test results to the World Health Organization. It has to notify the WHO if there's a confirmed case. The South Korean ministry said the North still has no cases, and it will continue to monitor North Korean media and the WHO for any developments. The North Korean media made an official announcement on February 2nd that the virus had not been found in the country and has since continued to report on the regime's strengthened quarantine measures. Starting today, the South Korean government will be accepting requests for compensation from people who've been quarantined to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. The Health and Welfare Ministry says people can submit requests to their local administrative offices and businesses that have uh, given workers paid leave can apply through the National Pension Service. The government will compensate those who've been hospitalized or in self-quarantine based on their family size and how long they were away. A person in a four-person family who's been quarantined for longer than two weeks will be paid about 1,040 U.S. dollars. Employers will be paid based on their workers' salaries with an individual limit of $110 a day. In other news, a busy week ahead for the National Assembly. Lawmakers kicked off their February extraordinary session this afternoon, which will be the last of its kind before the April 15th general election. For two days, starting Tuesday, there will be speeches by the representatives of the floor negotiation groups, and the three-day interpolation session will begin next week. Lawmakers are also gearing up for the election, now just less than two months away. This will be the first time in three years that there's a joint bloc among the conservatives. Called the United Future Party, an informal translation of the party's Korean name, it's a breakaway group from the minor Padan Mide Party, the Onward for Future 4.0 Party, and some independent lawmakers. 
The director of the Oscar-winning film Parasite, Bong Joon-ho, came back Sunday to a hero's welcome in his home country of South Korea. Wrapping up a marathon awards season, he says he's now looking forward to creating again. Our Um Ji Young reports. A great cheer went up in Incheon International Airport's arrivals hall as Bong Joon-ho returned to home soil. Bong arrived in South Korea on Sunday afternoon, fresh from winning four Oscars at the 92nd Academy Awards for his black comedy thriller, Parasite. Greeted by a large crowd upon his arrival, Bong thanked fans for coming out despite the cold weather. I'm sorry for your hard work since the Cannes Film Festival in May last year. I feel lighthearted to wrap up a long journey in the U.S. I'm happy to say I can now return to my main job, which is making movies. He also said he would like to send a round of applause to all South Koreans who are working hard to combat the coronavirus outbreak. He added he'll join the efforts by washing his hands diligently. As well as throngs of TV cameras and reporters, many fans had made the trip to the airport to catch a glimpse of the high-decorated director. I've lived in Korea for 10 years, so I was very proud that, uh, that someone in this country had won an Oscar. It's really great. When he won the Oscars, I felt very proud as a Korean. I believe he will achieve even greater things in the future. Pung has a busy schedule ahead of him. He told the reporters that there will be a press conference on Wednesday with the crew members and actors and actresses of Parasite to share the stories behind the film's historic Oscar win. Pung has plans at the Blue House on Thursday as President Moon Jae-in invited him to a luncheon to personally congratulate him on his success. Om ji Arirang News. South Korean speed skater Park Ji-won wrapped up the men's overall 1,000-meter title with a second win for the weekend at the ISU Short Track Speed Skating World Cup season finale in the Netherlands. In Dordrecht on Sunday, Park confirmed his world number one position with victories in the 1,000 and 1,500-meter races. The 23-year-old continued his good form following three golds in the fifth event of the season in Germany last week. President Moon Jae-in says it's time for a total effort to revive the economy amid fears of a contraction due to the coronavirus outbreak. Moon received briefings from three ministries, including Finance and Trade, along with the Financial Services Commission, on the government's economic policies for 2020. He said they'll have to show concrete changes this year. <laughs> Moon also praised efforts to deal with the export restrictions imposed last year by Japan, saying it was possible thanks to cooperation between ministries, as well as large and small companies. He called for similar efforts to minimize the fallout of the coronavirus on the economy, which is seeing a slump in tourism and consumption. President Moon noted that small businesses were suffering from high rent, and he called for efforts to achieve mutual prosperity. Moon also once again called on the public to trust the government's quarantine efforts and to resume their daily lives as usual. And now the details of the economy ministry's policy report to President Moon. The government will expand support and ease regulations to foster South Korea's new growth engines, such as the bio industry, and help venture firms that are deemed innovative. The report focuses on five pillars that include exploring new industries, securing innovative technology by boosting R&D, and further enhancing the efficiency of existing businesses. 15.8 trillion won, or about $13 billion, will be injected to achieve innovative growth for this year, which is up 46 percent from last year, while 5.2 trillion won will be pumped into venture firms to expand the number of the so-called unicorn firms, companies worth more than 1 trillion won. The government's announced plans to provide financial support to companies affected by the coronavirus. Finance Minister Hong Nam-gi said in a minister's meeting today, 
that uh, to budget airlines, the government will offer emergency loans of up to 250 million U.S. dollars. And low-cost carriers that cut flights or cancel routes, they won't have to pay for airport facilities for up to three months. Shipping businesses will also get around 50 million U.S. dollars of support, and small and medium-sized tourism businesses can get low-interest loans. In terms of Japan's trade curbs, the minister said companies in South Korea have not shown tangible damage, but he again asked Japan to reconsider its measures. Time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon, and for that I'm joined on the line by Dr. Young Jun Suk, professor of economics at the Catholic University of Korea. Professor Young, thank you for making time today. Happy to be here. So stocks on Wall Street were up last week despite the coronavirus. The question is whether that'll continue this week. Uh, what's the story in the Korean markets and stocks globally? Okay, well, Korea market, uh, we had a sort of a mixed day today. Kospi went down by 0.06%. Kostak went up by 0.53%. The Asian markets seem to be uh, having mixed results as well. The Japanese market was down about 0.69%. Chinese market, it's not finished yet, but uh, both the uh, Shanghai and the Hong Kong markets are going upwards. And then the U.S. market, they're not open yet, but uh, looking at last Friday's numbers, uh, most of them did fairly well, not to only on Friday, but the week overall. Uh, and uh, the European market, the Euro 50, went z uh, down 0.2% on uh, Friday uh, because of Brexit and German slowdown worries. Uh, so the U.S. market seems to be the only one that's doing consistently well. Over the last week, the U.S. market, the Dow went up by 1%, S&P went up by 1.58%, NASDAQ went up by 2.2%. Now, the, uh, the uh, reason that the U.S. market is going up is because, well, they're the only major economy whose economy is on a healthy growth uh, trend, but also uh, more and more people are beginning to become worried that the reason that the U.S. stock market is doing very well is because of ultra-low interest rate that's been continuing for a long time. And this is the dangerous part. The uh, market may believe that the Fed may bail them out of any potential dangers, in which case this is a really an environment that's ripe for a bubble. Uh, so more and more people seem to be worried about possibility of a uh, bubble taking place. Yeah, everyone's saying that's the only place left to put your money is in stocks uh, at the moment. Um, but uh, we also see in other news, Korea's trade surplus with the U.S. in goods has risen by 15 percent. Still, Korea went down on the list of countries with which America has a trade deficit down to number 14. What do you make of that news and what stands out to you in particular? Okay, well, uh, let's look at it first from the U.S. point of view. The uh, U.S. trade deficit fell for the first time in six years. It fell by 1.7% to $606.8 billion. That's about 2.9% of the GDP. Both goods imports and exports dropped. So this is not a signal of a very healthy economy, but rather uh, uh, the Fallen exports probably reflect the fact that the uh, global economy is not doing very well, and the fallen imports probably is due because of the uh, tariffs that President Trump has put on not only China but many other countries as well. Now, uh, the problem comes uh, partially because, well, the uh, – for Korean side, one of the reasons that the uh, trade surplus went up may be because we're taking some of the Chinese demand. Uh, the United States has to import some of these manufacturing goods from elsewhere, and Korea may have been one of the beneficiaries. President Trump, I don't think we'll be satisfied with these numbers. Uh, even though the trade deficit went down and he'll probably be taking credit for it, he still doesn't like the fact that the uh, U.S. has a trade deficit and one of the countries which has a lot of trade surplus with the United States is Korea, so he'll probably use these numbers to pressure Korea rather than uh, lay off. Uh, from Korea's point of view, Exports to the United States went up by 0.7 percent. It was led by automobiles and automobile parts, but household electronics did very well as well. That's despite the uh, U.S. tariffs on washing machines. And then uh, Korean imports from the United States went up 
uh, by a large degree, surprising degree. And a lot, uh, that was basically led by crude oil. Crude oil imports went up by 99.7% compared to last year. And that partially is because of the problems in the Middle East, as well as uh, pressure from President Trump to import more from Korea, uh, import more from the United States. And again, I'm not, I don't think this is enough to pacify President Trump. I think he'll use these numbers to keep uh, pressure on, the, on Korea to import more from uh, the United States. Well, now, uh, Dr. Young, uh, the spread of the coronavirus is clearly going to hurt uh, the global economy to one degree or another. What's your outlook in that regard and what kind of events are coming up uh, economically? Okay, well, uh, we've been seeing a lot of sort of a roller coaster ride depend, uh, on the uh, COVID-19. Uh, any bad news uh, means a very uh, rapid decline in the uh, financial market as well as the uh, real economy. Any good news seems to be bumping things up. Uh, per, uh, so we're seeing perhaps a lot more of a roller coaster ride than it's warranted. But some of the interesting uh, statistics that we'll sh we should be looking out for this week uh, should be the uh, consu uh, for the Korean side, consumer household income trend comes out on uh, Friday uh, from the statistics office. We probably know most of the salient trends, but still, it'll be nice to see whether they'll be confirmed by official figures uh, that uh, consumer spending uh, income has gone up, but not enough to perhaps lead the recovery. And then on the foreign side, the United States uh, Fed, as well as the uh, European Central Bank, has their monetary policy meeting uh, records, the minutes coming out on the uh, latter part of the week. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what their uh, uh, monetary policy makers uh, feel about the current economy. And then the uh, Purchasing Managers Index for Manufacturing comes out for various countries, U.S., France, Germany, and U.K., also on the later part, latter part of the week. It'll be interesting to see how the manufacturing industries in these countries are going on the European side because of the uh, Brexit and the slow down in the German economy and on the United States because, well, uh, as I said, they've been growing at a healthy trend, but their major weakness right now is in the manufacturing sector. So we'll see whether the, uh, that trend is continuing or whether uh, there may be signs of recovery. All right, Professor Young, we'll have to leave it there for today. Thanks so much for sharing your insights. We appreciate it. Thank you. South Korea's LG Chem has been rated the world's fourth fastest growing chemical company, with its brand value standing at three and a half billion U.S. dollars. According to an annual report by Britain-based Brand Finance, LG Chem said its brand value jumped by 4.8 percent year on year. The report noted that despite the sluggish global chemical industry, the South Korean company stayed profitable last year. Major chemical firms in other countries, however, including Germany's BASF and America's Dow Chemical, saw a noticeable drop in their brand values. The number of foreigners living in South Korea has surpassed 2.5 million for the first time. According to the statistics from the Ministry of Justice, the number of foreign residents stood at 2.52 million as of the end of December, up 6.6 percent from the previous year. Foreigners now account for 4.9 percent of the nation's entire population, with the largest number from China, followed by Vietnam, Thailand, the U.S., the U.S., and Japan. The number of foreigners staying in the country illegally also rose by 9.9 percent on year, surpassing 390,000. A South Korean multicultural center is looking to help foreign residents file paperwork and handle other administrative affairs with an interpretation service. Starting today, the Happy Lo Multicultural Center is operating a help center for multicultural families and foreign residents and provides interpretation services on weekdays from 10 a.m. to noon and from 2 to 4 p.m. Interpretation will be offered in Chinese, English, Japanese, Vietnamese, Tagalog and others. Those looking to use the service can visit the Happy Lo office in Seoul's Yeongdung Pogu district or visit the website at happylo.kr.
And that brings us to the end of this newscast. Thank you for watching. More live news coming your way at 7 p.m. Korea time. Novel coronaviruses.